Hi everyone, uh, I'm Kevin. I'm Diego. And we're from Progress Brewing and we're gonna talk about uh, the exciting uh, beers we have in our Beer of the Month Club box for January. Yes, so uh, we have some new and exciting beers that we've been working on for a while and uh, hope everyone had a great holiday and we're getting back to business here in 2021, which uh, should be better than 2020. Awesome, so without further ado, let's take a look at what's in this month's box. Our four classic beers for this month are Alamo Cream Ale, our Cavalry Double IPA, our Lionheart Barley Wine, and our Blonde Ale, always a favorite. Uh, for our side-by-side -side this month, we did Double Bison. It's been a while since we've had this one, and we are really happy to have it back, and with the uh, unique twist that we designed for it. So we have our Double Bison Imperial Red Ale, and then we have our uh, Double Bison Imperial Red Ale with blueberries added. And then last but not least, we have our barrel-aged beer this month, and it's a sour, and it's our Mulberry Delight. Uh, this is a barrel-aged sour aged for 32 months, 32 months in wine barrels, uh, with mulberries grown on a, a Zach, our brewer's uh, tree at home. So we're excited to do a little quick tasting here with you guys of the uh, unique beers we have for this month. First up, we are uh, tasting our Double Bison Imperial Red Ale. We're very excited to make a double IPA, and uh, when formulating it, we, there was just too many delicious, uh, darker, interesting grains uh, that we wanted to add, and it ended up being a little bit darker uh, than we anticipated. Uh, and we felt we could not call it a double IPA, and so we made our Imperial Red Ale. Uh, just as hoppy as a, your you know, classic double IPAs with a lot of uh, character and hop flavor, uh, but a little maltier, a little sweeter than uh, your typical double IPAs. Okay, great, so we have Double Bison uh, with our can art made by uh, Kat, one of our uh, team members here. And so as you can see, Red Ale, it's a nice bronzish, copperish color and a real beautiful, like lasting kind of cream tan. Light, yeah, yeah. Yep. And with really nice lacing on the glass mm. here. If I, I get a nice lot of strong aromas, uh, mm -hmm. fruity and also uh, kind of bready. Mm -hmm. So a lot of malt, and, but also a lot of fruit, tropical fruit component. Yeah, you get a lot of uh, fruit and like grapefruit in the nose there. Mm. Mm. So yeah, so the malt, I feel the malt is kind of like an, overarching uh, canvas uh, mm -hmm. to this beer. And then you have mango, guava, uh, kind of like greenish mango mm -hmm. uh, from the hops. And then the malt really gives kind of these accent flavors and kind of this lingering finish of like, uh, like a grapefruit, grapefruit at the end, kind of mm -hmm. like the bitterness kind of mellows out. And I get like an, uh, kind of a toast uh, flavor at the end yeah, there, like a, kind of a wheat toast uh, in there. Yeah, wow, it's great, mm -hmm. very tasty. And you can see it in our uh, beer club of the month. Beautiful goblet here. Mo goblet, yep. Overall, it's just a very, uh, despite being 8%, it's very sessionable. Uh, it's very balanced. Not a lot uh, uh, lingers in like an unpleasant way. It's just a very balanced, tasty beer. It kind of invites you into a second sip. I think that's Would key. go great with food. The balance. Mm -hmm. It has a nice malty background, nice uh, punchy, fruity, flowery, uh, bitterness, complexity. And then at the end, it just kind of like all ties together. And Absolutely. Melts out. Yeah, it's hard Cheers, to Kevin. Cheers. Mm. Next up, we have our uh, double bison with blueberries. Uh, so we're very excited about it. Um, the only thing is there's a lot of fruit puree in there. And so it's pretty juicy. So just to make sure you get a nice homogenous pour here, we recommend just kind of gently rolling it to make sure it's nice and mixed up. So without further ado, we're conserving water, and so uh, we've uh, uh, not rinsed our previous ones here, so here we go. Beautiful. All right, so uh, when we, why we thought of blueberries was uh, we were uh, really excited to uh, add some fruit to our uh, Imperial Red Ale here, but because there's so much hops and some lingering bitterness and a lot of malt flavors, we wanted a lot of fruit in there so it would really stand out against it and not just get lost in the shuffle. Yeah, and the idea is you either um, add a fruit that you already have in the beer to contribute to highlight that fruit, or you add a fruit that you don't have that flavor in the beer so you kind of generate another series of flavors that adds to the whole complexity. Mm -hmm. Now in this beer, we have a lot of tropical fruit and we have some citrus, but we felt that we did not have any berry flavor that is really good and really tasty. Mm -hmm. So going with blueberries, which is not like a strawberry, like a lightly flavored to stand up to the other flavors, we thought a blueberry would have been 
a great um, component that would add to the whole complexity of the beer that has malt, tropical fruit, and um, and citrus. Mm -hmm. So let's try this out. Right. Cheers. So obviously, not surprising, blueberry. Like blueberry. Yeah. It, it's, it's right in there. Um, it's However, mm -hmm. um, the citrus and the mango, the, I, I feel everything changes a little bit. I, I feel the mango goes into like passion fruit and then the citrus, I feel the citrus changes probably to like sweet orange. And it gets a little bit of the, the sweetness coming from the blueberry kind of gives the citrus flavor a little more kind of like marmalade jam kind of uh, yeah. notes. That's the real fun part about adding a new element and tasting it side by side is those same flavors you're already tasting get modified and just change in a little way. And it's fun to taste them kind of one right after another because you can kind of go, this transformed into that. That wheat toast we were getting. Yeah, now I get like marmalade. Yeah, kind of like marmalade spread on like rye toast or something. Uh, it really has that kind of almost Adds almost like a spicy element to it. Yeah, I feel I feel like a spicy grain, like rye. Uh, obviously toasted because mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, kind of darker uh, flavors, darker malt flavors in there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, it's it's great. It's nice. Wow, I love it. A lot of blueberry in there. A lot it's of great. blueberry. Uh, which is something you want uh, on some of the fruits that are a little less intensely flavored. You want to you want to make sure you add enough to actually get that uh, flavor note present. Otherwise, it's just kind of lost in the mix and you said you added something even though you can't really taste it. So with blueberry, which is, which is which is nice in some cases, mm -hmm. but I feel with these experiments, it's uh, fun to, you, gotta, you gotta go a little heavy. Hit the gas a little harder yeah. on, on some of these. So we're glad we did because it's tasty. Great. Thank you guys. And lastly, we have our Mulberry Delight. It's our barrel aged sour, aged for 32 months in wine barrels. And we're really excited to uh, show it to you guys. It's about as fresh as a canned beer can be. We canned it not 40 minutes ago. So we have our Mulberry Delight here. Uh, it's made with mulberries from our uh, brewer Zach's uh, home tree that they have. And they were uh, nice enough to donate some and we juiced them up, added them into the barrel and let them sit for uh, several months. Yeah, so. so Kevin, I had never seen a mulberry. I didn't even know what they were. I, I'm going to be perfectly honest. Prior to this, I had tasted and known what mulberries were, but I had never seen one in person, nor did I know what they're like. They're, they're, very, they're cute little berries. They're, they're so, very nice. So to me, they look like a blackberry, but they're longer and they're yeah. more aromatic yeah. and slightly less tart, a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. So I, I've heard that mulberries existed, but I had never seen some. I don't think I'd ever had them outside of the context of a pie. And so uh, we oh, were like mulberry pie. Yeah, we were, we were. I didn't grow up here, so I, I wouldn't know. We were excited to try it. Uh, it's. Uh, we made They're ours. really, really good because they have a lot of uh, aromatics mm -hmm. that we thought were going to play great with the beer. And they actually do. And they do. Just from smelling this, it's great because you get a lot of the kind of acidity, the lactic uh, aromas of, of a typical sour. But but you get like a flowery note, like a nice rose, mm -hmm. rose hip, yeah. little violet. A nice sweet sour uh, kind of profile there, like some sweetness mm -hmm. from the berry and then just a nice pleasant lasting tartness it's not a it's not a mouth destroyer uh right and what's fun is that when we when we initially were trying this barrel this barrel was significantly was significantly more tart and the the fruit has very very much mellowed the sourness in a very pleasant way wow yeah so it's got a little bit of malt background mm -hmm. a little malt character mm -hmm. um the, the 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 tartness of the of the sourness is definitely present but mm -hmm. not not overpowering but has a, such a nice fruity caramel background. Yeah. Wow. I don't know, between um, our footer, Oat Bruin, and this mulberry sour, I think it's one, one of the tastiest we're, things. We're, we're, we're happy about the sours we've pumped out here in the past uh, couple months for the Beer of the Month Club. And uh, it's been fun doing these yeah. single barrel projects because you get to kind of go wild with it and try new things. Yeah, last year's Frida, mm -hmm. this mulberry, and the Oat Bruin. Fantastic. Uh, we made this in a rustic -y style, so uh, some cans may have a, uh, a uh, mulberry skin or two, so don't be alarmed by that. Uh, yeah. It gives it extra character. Mm. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of acetic mm -hmm. uh, sourness, just mm -hmm. to complement everything, give it a little extra zing. It kind of plays into that like sweet sour we were talking about. Right. It's just like, it's got, a, it's got a very complex sourness. It's not just like a sharp one note lactic that you'll get in some 
uh, very quickly made sours. It, yeah, you, you very, get this from 32 months on a barrel. Yeah. Uh, and part of, part of the fun and why we're excited to uh, have the club and get to talk about this is like, what's, what's the rationale? Why, why age all of these beers for so long? Like what extra character does it give you? And uh, the short answer is complexity. Like you just get so much more out of uh, these beers than you would get if you just only let them sit for a few months, only in stainless, so, uh, things like that. And uh, from a personal note, the, the best part about all of this is getting to continually tasting all the barrels and finding when the barrel has reached its sweet spot and when it's ready for fruit, when you add fruit, when it's ready for release. Uh, because you really get to watch the beer evolve over time and kind of reach its absolute. It's like it's like our children. We see them kind of grow. We see them grow up. And, yeah. they, we, and when we taste them, we and some of them mess up, and you gotta you gotta hold it. Yeah, and, and just wait. And, and then, then some of them are. And fantastic. then eventually they graduate college here. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it's it's fun to watch them uh, evolve and find that right. perfect time to release them. So uh, we've been waiting on this one, this barrel, a while, and it's really coming to its own here. So. Mm. It is great, guys. <clears throat> hope, you, hope you like it as much as I do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if not, you can give it to me and I'll take it. So. Yeah, I'm gonna take some, yeah. some cans home. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Um, as always, if you wanna join our Beer of the Month Club, uh, you can visit our website at uh, progressbrewing.shop and uh, find uh, subscriptions there. If you use the code PIONEER, uh, you can save $11 off of the price there and uh, you can even get it shipped to you in California if you'd like, so. Great, thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Cheers. It's really good. It is really good.